Good morning and uh, welcome to the Church of the Holy Trinity on the Wednesday Eucharist and Healing Service. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit, come fill us to overflowing. Be our guide, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit, show us your power. A teacher, Holy Spirit, lead us into all truth. Come. Spirit, be our healer. Heal us, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, heal us and make us whole. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O God of compassion, for the heroic witness of Constance and her companions, who, in a time of plague and pestilence, were steadfast in their care for the sick and dying, and loved not their own lives even unto death. Inspire in us a like love and commitment to those who are in need, following the example of our Savior Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Our New Testament lesson is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the suffering of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> okay, the... Uh, the disease had become an epidemic, and quarantine was in order. 30,000 citizens fled in terror. As cases multiplied, the death tolls continued to climb. 90% of the population had contracted the fever, and so many thousands had died. No, I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about 1878 and the yellow fever, 
which had come to Memphis and had killed so many, many lives. It was terrifying. It was a pandemic. And during that time, um, OK, I was going to say compare it with now. Com um, during that time, a woman called Constance, who was the superior of the work of the Sisters of St. Mary in Memphis, was called to the cathedral to work with many of these people. And the area around the cathedral was very poor, and the suffering was enormous. That was then. Now, my, my niece Sarah, a nurse, works in Sinai Hospital in New York. It is not quite as frightening now as it was a few months ago, but I was so worried for her, as I'm sure so many people were worried for the people who work on the front lines. Many of the front line workers have died. Constance and her companions and many of the priests died. So my question that I've been struggling with is, why should Constance and her companions be called martyrs? I mean, they weren't thrown to the lions or burned to the stake, but not the frontline workers now here. They're called heroes or heroines. So what's the difference between a martyr Constance and her companions doing the same work as the people now are doing. And the heroes and heroines of our present day. I think the, the thought I've come to is that it has to do with intention. Both Constance, her companions, the nurses, the doctors, the frontline workers, are all in their different ways professionals. They give of their utmost despite the environment, despite the consequences. And indeed, many, many have died. Their work has been sacrificial. So why do we call them martyrs? I think, and I may be wrong, I think it may have to do with intentionality. Constant, Constance and her sister nuns and the priests who worked around the cathedral were so intentional about serving Christ, which is not to say that the front line are, well, many of the front line workers are also intentional, but not necessarily all of them, because not necessarily all of them follow Christ. But I think where there is that intentionality, it means that the person who offers the help tries to be the hands of Christ, not just a nurse, not just a doctor, but, in, um, but also the hands of Christ, the heart of Christ, that they're not simply doing the work they have been trained to do, and that they want to do. I know my niece Sarah wants to do this work, however much it frightens us. And she has a great desire, as I know so many of the others do. And so many people who have found different places to live so that they won't contaminate their families. And there have been all sorts of different kinds of hardships. But if one goes about one's work, whether it's every day or in a hospital, with the intention that one's interactions by word or hands or whatever is for Christ, it takes, it gives a little bit of extra depth, perhaps, from my perspective, to the work that they're doing. That the work doesn't point to them, the work points to Christ, points to God. And I think. I hope this is not heresy. I think that all good work points to God. But for those 
who follow our Lord, there is an intentionality that is stronger than perhaps anything else, that that is their desire, and through that desire comes their healing touch. It is maybe a subtle difference. It is maybe no difference at all. But that's what I've been struggling with this week. And if that is the case, then it means whatever I do needs to be done intentionally with the hands of Christ. Not just go to a meeting and make decisions about this or that, but make decisions saying, am I conveying the desire of Christ? Am I doing the work of Christ? It means leading one's life much more intentionally than we in modern day rushing around America do. But maybe that's one of the gifts of this COVID-19 time that we are forced to slow down and think more specifically. More specifically, why has God placed us here at this time? Are we indeed trying to be the hands of Christ? Amen. The Litany of Healing on page three of the bulletin. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers, most especially on our prayer list, a parish prayer list for Bill, Terry, Janet, Jane, Betty Ann, Cesar, Jean, Sally, Jeanette, Debbie, Carol, Mary Ellen, all those who are bereaved, all those with the COVID-19 virus, the staff and children at our school and at the Sao Paulo Mercy Ministries. Are there others who you would name? I would name Mandy and her family. God the Father, your will your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our parish, in our community, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among all peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. In your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, 
Send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in everlasting life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, even though we're far apart. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Christmas, I should have got the knack of putting these on easily. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't have to do this during the yellow fever. Might have helped if they did. Okay, I'm almost there. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. You fill our hearts with faith in your love and your creating and healing power. We know that you give us your peace and help us to make room in our hearts and lives to accept your healing touch. We know that you give us your peace and help us to make room in our hearts and lives to accept your touch. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to his friends, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bound to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. During this time when we cannot be gathered together in person and receive the physical anointing of oil, I ask you to write down um, the name of a person, a family member, friend, relationship, a situation that needs your healing, your holy healing. And then place your hand upon that person's name and and join me in saying the prayer in the middle of page seven. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, whom all things in heaven and on earth and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense and make you to know that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, 
so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fulfill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May God the Father bless you. May God the Son heal you. May God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the holy and undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>